In this video, I'm going to show you how to build and deploy your containerized application, starting from your GitLab repo to hosting it on Google Cloud Run. To do this, first I'm going to give you an overview of the GitLab to Cloud Run pipeline. Then we're going to go into some details about how to set up your Google Cloud project, and then how to trigger and configure your deploy from GitLab to Cloud Run. First, let's talk about how the pipelines work from a high level. So the first part of our pipeline is GitLab, which is going to actually host our code. Some important files that exist in here is all of our application code, our Docker files, our GitLab CI config, and our cloud build config, which we'll go into more later. When we push code to our repo, we're going to trigger our deployment pipeline. This is going to trigger a job which sends our code over to cloud build, which will then do the actual building of our container images. Once those containers are created, it's then going to deploy the images over to Cloud Run, making it available for use as a service. I go into more detail about Cloud Run and why I use it in this video if you want to check that out. For this example, I'm going to be using the Cloud Seed SaaS boilerplate. This gives me two fully functioning, fully containerized apps, which is perfect for deploying to Cloud Run via this pipeline, and thus as an example for this flow. That said, any containerized app should work with this deployment pipeline using these examples. So most of this step is just going to be enabling APIs and making sure that we have the right permissions set up. I'm going to fly through this a little fast, but uh, if you want to see the steps, I will have the link to my original blog post below so you can walk through them at your own pace. Okay, so here's my example Google Cloud project. And the first thing that we want to do is enable Google Cloud Build. So let's open up this sidebar. Let's go to cloud build here. And it should present us with a thing that's like, you need to enable the API. And so we can do that by just clicking this API, wait a few seconds for it to load, um, and then we can continue. So it's still loading, still loading, still loading. Okay, so we're in this new page. So it seems like the API is now enabled. Um, and now we want to set some permissions uh, here. And we can do this by going to the settings page. And the permissions that we want are first Google Cloud Run admin. Um, this is going to enable Cloud Build to actually uh, deploy to Cloud Run, um, which we want for our pipeline. Uh, you might see that this pop up happens. Um, I'm going to create a separate service account for this that's a little bit safer. So I'm going to skip this step for now. We do probably want to set up the Google Cloud Run API. So let's go ahead over there to do that. And we can just enable this as well. While this is enabling, um, we can go back here uh, to continue setting up our permissions. And so the next one that we want to set up is going to be um, the service accounts. So we want service accounts so that we can uh, actually make sure that Cloud Builds can run as this. Uh, maybe it's mad because two things are happening at once. Okay, so let's enable this one and it's enabled. Great, so service accounts here and Cloud Run are the ones that you want. Okay, the next part of this that we wanna do is we want to create a service account which will basically Cloud Build will run as so that it can have the right permissions that it needs, um, but nothing outside of those permissions. This is mostly for security, uh, but it's generally good practice to not give everything permission to everything. To do this, we're going to go to I am an admin here, and then we are going to go to service accounts, and then we're going to create our service account. Um, I'm going to name mine GitLab CI. Cloud builds. It's generally good to give it a pretty descriptive name so you know what it's used for. Uh, it can prevent abuse um, of people just using the wrong service account for the wrong things. So we'll create and continue here. And then the two roles that we want here are going to be the cloud build service agent. This one, um, it says it gives the account access to managed resources. And then we also want to give it the cloud build. Uh, editor, which will allow it to create and cancel builds. These are the ones that I found work the best um, in this pipeline. Uh, it's possible there's other combinations that work as well, but I know that this works, so this is what we're going with. And then we can just click done here. Okay, so now that we have our cloud builds um, service account created, we actually need to make sure that we can get access to it somehow. And the way that we can do that is by creating a key. And the key is basically going to say, um, you know, whoever's using this key must have been given permission. 
uh, to use this thing. So I'm gonna let you uh, be this uh, service account, which is how we're actually gonna get access to all the resources. So let's add our key. Um, we're gonna create a new key here and the type here is gonna be JSON. So let's create it and it's gonna automatically download this stuff. Um, I'm not gonna show this to you. So I'm not gonna show you uh, the contents of this key because it is secret, um, but we do wanna keep this file and its contents for later because we'll need that in the GitLab pipeline. Awesome, and that's all we really need to do to set up our Google Cloud project for this deployment pipeline. So with that set up, all that's left to do is to actually configure and trigger our deployment pipeline from GitLab. So here's my example GitLab repo. Uh, here we can see that I have my web and app applications, which are the things that I'm going to be deploying. So the first thing that we wanna to do to actually configure our deployment pipeline from GitLab is to set up our environment variables. So to do this, we're going to go to settings, we're going to click on CICD, and then we are going to go to this variables section, and we're just gonna expand that. I'm gonna go ahead and set up my values, and then I'll talk through what they are. Okay, so here I've gone ahead and added these variables um, that we're gonna be using in the GitLab CI configuration. So the first variable that I wanna bring your attention to is the GCP project ID. This is just the project ID for your Google Cloud project. Um, and this is how we're going to uniquely identify that this is the project we were trying to push to that we're trying to you know, modify uh, using this deployment pipeline. The next one here is the GCP Cloud Build Service Key. And so this is that JSON, that secret JSON that we downloaded earlier. Uh, I just opened up the file, I took the contents and I threw it into this. With those set up, we can tell the pipeline which project we wanted to talk to and then also how it can authenticate with that pipeline so that it can actually talk to the project. So with these two variables set up, we have a way for our pipeline to tell Google Cloud what we wanna to talk to and then also how we can authenticate with Google Cloud to tell it that it's allowed to talk to it. Okay, so let's go back to our repo. And the next thing that we wanna set up is our GitLab CI.yaml. I've already deployed this here um, to make sure that it's working and I'll walk through uh, what it does. So this is a special file that lives in GitLab um, and basically it lives at the root of your project and it tells GitLab, this is the pipeline that I want you to run when I push to this repository. Basically what it's saying is that there exists a deploy stage that I want the CI to run. I want you to, we're saying that deploy prod stage is part of that deploy stage. We want you to pull the Google Cloud SDK image so that we can use it. We only want you to run this when the master branch is pushed to. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the service key that we configured earlier for use. We're gonna authenticate with the SDK using that service key. We're going to tell the SDK that we want to talk to that project that we set up in the variable earlier. And then we're gonna say we want to use Google Cloud Builds um, using this cloudbuilds.yaml configuration, which we'll set up in a minute. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up this JSON file because it is secret. Uh, we don't want it to just be laying around. So now when we push to our repo, um, this is what's actually going to start the pipeline triggering. So now the final thing that we need to do is set up our cloud build config. Once GitLab pushes the, the config over, that's actually what's gonna tell cloud build what we want it to do, how we want it to build the container images, and um, also how we want it to deploy to Cloud Run. So if we go back to our repo here and we look in the cloudbuild.yaml, we can see this file. So basically what we're telling Cloud Build to do is for each of uh, the applications that we wanna deploy, here I have one for app and here I have one for web, I want you to build the container image and I'm telling it where to find the Docker file here. I want you to push the container image and then I want you to actually deploy that container image to Cloud Run. So now that our Google Cloud project is set up and we have added all of our configs to our GitLab repo, our deployment pipeline theoretically should be working. That said, it's always useful to verify these things, especially when we have so many different moving parts. So I'm gonna quickly run through how you can do that yourself. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna start with each step in the pipeline and just check that it's working expected. So here I'm inside of my GitLab repo and I've just gone to the CI/CD pipeline section and we can actually just run our pipeline as if we had just pushed to this master branch. So if we go there and then click run pipeline, this will kick off the deploy. 
I'll wait a minute or two um, for it to complete and then uh, we can restart. Okay, so our pipeline just finished and it says it's failed, but let's click in and see what the actual logs say. Let's see, so it's getting the SDK here. Uh, we are activating the service account credentials. We are trying to set our project, which says it doesn't exist, but that seems fake. Um, we are uploading all of our code to Google Cloud, and then it says that the build is running. Okay, so often it will give us an error job field here, but mostly it's because it's saying that it can't view the logs on this side, uh, which makes sense because we don't really want to export anything from Google Cloud to an external party. So this probably worked as expected, at least to upload to Cloud Build. So let's go check that as well. So the next step is to actually go to Cloud Build um, and look at what we've uh, kicked off to see if this actually worked. So if we do this um, and refresh, it looks like uh, about five minutes ago, we were able to do a successful build. So if we look inside of here, we can see all the steps that it ran. So here it was building the image, here it was pushing the image, um, and here we actually uh, pushed to Cloud Run, and it looks like this was able to run successfully for app, and then the same for web. So that's great. It looks like Cloud Build was able to work correctly. And then if we go to Cloud Run, we can actually just refresh here and see if it worked as expected. So here it says the last deploy is five minutes ago. The last deploy was two minutes ago. So it looks like everything is working as expected. Now, hopefully your deployment pipeline worked just as well as this one did. Um, if it didn't, I can't cover all failure cases here, but I really would recommend looking into the Google Cloud logs. Usually there's a ton of information there that can help you find the root cause. So all the code that I listed here on my site, um, including the GitLab CI and the cloud build configs will be available on my blog post. So you can get the full source code there if you wanna copy and paste it into your own pipeline. I'll have a link below for that. I'll also have a link to CloudSeed, which is a SaaS boilerplate built with SvelteKit, .NET, and Postgres, um, which is what I use for this example. And you can get that yourself at the link. And if you're interested in using a Cloud SQL managed database with your Cloud Run instance, this video shows you step-by-step -step instructions to get set up with a very cheap, very powerful database for less than $10 a month.